Hello everyone. I thought I would take a moment to show you my latest flight sim build. This I call the G1000 for VR users. <clears throat> I pretty much fly in VR totally now and having a screen, all that, none of that is really useful to me. I wanted something that I could feel in the dark, you know, when you're under the headset. That would be tactile and easy to use, and so this is what I came up with, and it's actually really great. So I <clears throat> figured I'd show you what I did and how I made it, and if you're interested, you can make one too. I did everything with parts on Amazon, except for a few things uh, that came from Leo Bodner, which is who makes boards, and they make these rotary things, which are just like the Knobster. They're the exact same hardware as the Knobster. So I figured I'd show you what I got here. So first off, I start with a piece of ABS plastic. So it is uh, just the eighth inch version of that. And um, so like, uh, obviously the screen is blank, but I use these bubbly buttons. They're like this kind of a thing. I've used these before. I think they're great because they're clicky and they are panel mounts. Everything I want needs to be panel mounted. Um, getting into circuit boards, and, um, you know, trying to mount a circuit board in there at the exact right height. 3D printing is like what you really need to do. And I'm not one for 3D printing. I don't have a 3D printer. I don't have a machine to do, you know, cutouts perfectly. Whatever you call it, a CNC machine. I don't have any of that. So I'm like using my carpentry skills and the tools that I have from home improvement and whatnot to build this. So it's kind of like the everyman's <laughs> VR tool. But, um... These little bubbly buttons are great, and so they stick out. They're very, you can feel them. I even will eventually, once I get used to how I want to work this, I'll take these little rubber bumps they use for like um, cabinet doors and stuff, or like feet, so that stuff doesn't slide. I just have these really tiny ones, round ones. I'll put those maybe on the center of these buttons, so I like can, in the dark, feel which one I'm on. But this is actually pretty easy, because as I'm flying, I just kind of reach out and. <laughs> Uh, you fly enough with the G1000, like, you know which button is which. So I just go from the top down and feel it out. I'm usually reaching from the bottom for flight level change or vertical speed. And then I know these are the up and downs. And then I'm reaching over and activating autopilot or coming down to heading. Like, you, you learn where they are. So you just kind of feel for the top of this and the bottom of it and work your way from there. But I might use those little bumpers for that. The trickiest part, I think, are these square buttons. So I wanted different, different shapes. So I use square for the bottom and round for the size. Thought that would be helpful. And um, I think I might, you know, use these a lot for the squawk codes over here. And then you're changing your GPS and your, you know, your uh, for your course navigation versus, you know, your course lines and so forth. So I might put a bumper on that one. Maybe the one that says the, the code so I can feel them out real fast and know which one is which. But otherwise, you know, I'm always reaching over here and I'm going ahead and hitting the you know nearest and so forth so it can kind of really just do it by feel of course the most you use are these over here and there's just six of them so that's really easy to just put your finger up there and know where you're at one of the cool things i did was a solution for the the range knob and the map panning i could not find like a twisting knob like a rotary encoder that would also click left and right so what i did was i actually got because i have the verbal um Oop, dropped it. I have the Verpal um, CM3, the, the throttle that I use for like DCS. And I just called, I just sent Verpal an email. and was like, do you have any of these like hat buttons that I could use to replace the one I have? I didn't really need it to replace it. But I, I noticed that there, this is a five-way hat that I got off of Leo Bodner. So it like, you know, clicks all different ways. And they were an exact match to the hats that were on the throttle. I pulled the hat off the throttle and was like, this looks like the same size. Put it on there and it was perfect. So I was like, ooh, I can buy these little five-way things from Leo Bodner. And then I just asked Verpal how much would it cost to get a couple of these. And it wasn't too much. I mean, I think I ordered three of them and it was like 10 or $12 for them to send them to me. And so then that's it. I just take this thing and slide it on there. And what I did was I designed it to where... Um, you know, click it to activate the arrow, and then you can pan. But the zoom is normally a twist, so I just put in one of these switches, the style switch, you know, except that one, this one is a 
momentary up and down, sort of for zooming in and zooming out. So I took two knob, I took one knob and turned it into two things. But actually, it's fine. That's the only thing that's really different, I would say. And then um, the rotary encoders are not cheap. I would say of all the parts in this, that they, these are the most expensive. And I haven't had a lot of luck with, with certain ones. I started out buying these ones from Prop Wash Sim. And I just have found that like the click action is not always very reliable. Like the button, the knobs, I have to actually shove some like, I put some cardstock or like little pieces of whatever in there because the button would fit on so far it didn't have any travel to click. So every now and then I have to like take out what's in there and put it back in so that this will click. But this one's smaller. And then these ones that I got from Leo Bodner, I'll put all the links to stuff in the description. These are nice and big. So I've got them, you know, in the four corners like you would. And then right here is a, you know, your barometric, your course, and over here is your heading, and that's clickable. That's just a standard rotary encoder. But you know, these rotary encoders need to get the dual ones. So here's like, it's kind of out of focus here. But you got the outer twist and then the inner twist, and they come with these knobs that go on them. So I do love these ones from Leo Bodner because they're big. They're easy to reach for and they have great feel. Where these are small and they're clicky. Um, just not as good. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I'll show you the back in a second for this thing. But I use spad.next to program it because um, it, this is a lot of buttons. And I use spad.next because in order to get access to all of the buttons on the G1000, they're not just programmed into Microsoft Flight Simulator. You have to use third-party software to access the commands through SimConnect. Um, so that's what it's using. But the cool thing is, is up at the top here, I put one of these switches like that because I just have one panel. And if I want to operate it as the PFD, I flip it this way. If I want to operate it as the MFD, I flip that switch right there. And then these all act are working on either side of the G1000. So I don't need two of them. You're in VR anyway, right? I don't want to have to be reaching around. It's all centralized right here. So if I'm like, you know, changing, going to my direct two, whatever over here on the PFD in front of the, you know, the left pilot seat, I just make sure it's flipped over here and all the buttons operate the left one. But if I'm going, you know, putting my flight plan and so forth and I need to program it in the MFD, I just flip it over here and it, it works because I just have conditions on all the buttons using spad.next. So I say, you know, this button push means uh, direct two. But if this, if this button is down, it means direct to on the MFD. If this button is down, it means direct to on the PFD. So that's, this is like, I just put conditions in there. I also, this was tricky because these buttons over here, when you click up, down, left or right, they, uh, they also activate the center. So one thing that I had to do was use two different boards. So I have two boards going on here. Mostly because, you know, I actually should count. This is more than 64 button clicks. So I had to use two of those boards to make it happen. Because um, the most you can get off of one board is 64 buttons and it didn't work. But the bonus that came to that, or the solution I found was that since it's two different boards, um, it was really easy to program this and put exceptions in. Like I have to do a long press. I could show you the details of it later, but because of that, it made this five-way hat work. Otherwise, I don't think I would have had a working push. I would have had to do something else for that. As you can see, it's a lot of wires. I'll show you how I mounted everything, but it's all on the panel. These are stuck on with some with some um, mounting tape, basically. I didn't screw those in. But I uh, just used a little half-inch wood trim for the frame, and I had an old 2 by or 4 by 4 laying around, so I put a little cut on that one. And then I have it just sitting on this pedestal so that I can mount it to the gear that I use. So let me show you how that would work. So on the, the yoke, this one's got, you know, the mounting holes for stuff. So I just went ahead and measured it out. So I have two holes right here and all I do is just screw it down. And then that one sits right there and it's just stuck right on top. Perfect. And then when I put the yoke down, it's good to go. And then sometimes when I'm flying one with a stick, the left-handed stick, this is the way I used to mount. I mount everything for DCS as well. 
I just use these little brackets like so. I actually cut them off to make them shorter. But I will take and I also put on this thing these little furniture clips or the T nuts. So they're banged in there. So then all I have to do is set it on top of this thing here. And then from underneath, right, since I have the furniture clips in there, I just take the, the bolts and put them up there and screw it in and pops it down so that I'm flying with a stick if I really want to. I usually just use the yoke. I can put that on there and then you've got it right in front for easy reach. So if you're interested, I can show you how I programmed all the buttons, but you got to use something like spat.next to make it happen. It's totally worth it. it. Makes it easy to use.